Good evening, you guys. How are you? You guys are here live on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook and Instagram page with Brandy. My name is Brandy. I'm with Brushed by Brandy. Um, and I'm a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. And I paint here live with you guys every Thursday evening at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, so we are live tonight. And um, we're going to do some painting. We're going to start a new project tonight. Um, you guys, my husband Sean is here to answer any questions along the way. So pop on if you have any questions about this project or another one you're working on. We're happy to answer any questions for you as we go, too. Um, so I've done a, a, quite a few of these. If you guys go to my YouTube channel and look under the playlist section, my YouTube channel is Brushed by Brandy. And under playlists, I've got several pieces that we've done on camera from start to finish over the um, course of a few episodes. And I put them in playlists so you can watch them. Um, and it becomes a start to finish tutorial that we did live. And we're going to do that same thing here with this one tonight. So this is a brand new piece that I just pulled out of my storage. Brand new. I just picked it up at the yeah. store. <laughs> brand yeah. new to who? Uh, what, what, where have you been shopping at, Brandy? Um, What's the shit that it fell <laughs> off a truck? It's super cute. It's this little pine chest. Um, it had, this is the hardware that it had on it. I don't hate these, but I don't love them. I, I'm on the fence about replacing them all together. Um, they're not terrible. They're just kind of, so I removed all my hardware. That's the first thing I do. Anytime I pull a piece out, I remove the hardware and I put it into a little caddy like this. And this way, um, all my hardware for my piece stays together. The screws and the handles are in one little hole. Um, and then they can go be cleaned and everything stays together instead of getting kind of moved around my workspace. So this has a couple projects in it right now, all the holes. Um, I picked these up at back to school time. I've got a few of them floating around my workspace um, in the Target. Our kids don't need that kind of stuff. Target dollar section. No, yeah, no. Like, I dump out their pencils. <laughs> kids scissors. Give me that. Yeah. Okay, so tonight we're going to get this piece ready for paint. We're going to take it straight from if you just pulled this out of, you know, the yard sale pile. And um, how would you get this ready to accept paint? So once I've got all my hardware off, I need to clean this piece really well. So I'm going to use Dixie Bell White Lightning. Um, and white lightning is a granulated formula. It's, it's the consistency of like a salt. And I dissolve it into a spray bottle of water. Um, and there's mixing instructions on the, on the container and you just mix it to the size of your spray bottle here. So um, I have already done this. So if I get a little spotty on my, on my steps here, that's why it's because it's already been done one time. Did you say there were instructions for that? There are, you can follow are them or not. Yeah. What? Um, More of a recommendation. Paper towel, are my paper towels over there? Uh, negative. No? What did I do with them? I just oh, my oh my gosh. Oh. oh, maybe they're way over here. Oh, because I had to move that furniture piece. The other side. I always get nervous when I'm painting around already finished furniture. If I get a drop on it, it's devastating. So I spray my piece with my white lightning cleaner. And then you can use a, an abrasive like an SOS pad. Or um, I'm just going to wipe this down with a paper towel because I've already cleaned it one oh. time. But you would clean your piece really well, okay? And I'm going to show you something as I'm cleaning this. <laughs> something I like to notice. Do you guys see what color is coming off of this piece right here? It's not dirty. This piece is going to be a bleeder. And you can already kind of tell by uh, the color of the stain that's on here. Underneath is pine. Pine has knots in it, and knots are really oily. They tend to bleed. So this is made of pine. But I can also just look at my rag and I can tell, oh my gosh, this has already been cleaned once. It's still coming off dirty. How filthy were these people? It's, that's not your problem. Your problem is that it's Wait, that came from our house. Oh, we have a guest tonight, I see. And he's brought us a small friend. <laughs> it's mini -me. Like a mini me. <laughs> Nothing weird about that, Bob. Nothing so Why does that guy keep saying yes? Okay, I pull the drawers out and I clean inside all my drawers. This would also be the time that I'm checking to see if I need to make any repairs. Are there any, are my uh, glides nice and tight? Do I need to fix any of my screws? Um, I'm looking at the wood. Do I need to use um, Dixie Mud and fill any gouges or holes in my wood? Um, this so do you typically clean it before you do any of these repairs? Um, yeah, I would clean it first. That's how I usually get acquainted with the piece. That's where I usually find the most things is when I'm, pulling all the drawers out, vacuuming in the insides. That's when you really find all the stuff that you need to do to it. Um, you know, if you notice stuff right off the bat, like gouges, you can go ahead and fill them. But, um, but I would clean it first. Plus, if you put the wood filler on it and then you clean over the top, Dixie Mud reactivates with water, with moisture. 
So if I had Dixie Mud on here, I would just reactivate it with my cleaner. So. So someone had mentioned that that is Bob and then his apprentice Bob. And, and baby Bob? BB. Baby, baby Bob. Okay. Once you've cleaned with your white lightning cleaner, you want to make sure, any cleaner, you want to make sure that you rinse off your cleaning residue. Cleaners can leave residue too. So I'm going to go ahead and come back, and I don't want to use my same rag, so I'm going to come back with just water, just plain water is all that was in the second spray bottle. And I'm going to wipe off my cleaning residue. Sorry, okay. Gary, there's nothing in the cubby. We got the bobs out. It's kind of a vacant... Uh, uh, because I have the most giant piece ever back there. I literally cannot move it away from the wall without help. It's huge. What are you um, doing later, Gary? <laughs> Sean, he, Sean needs help. That's what he's saying. We need. We have some furniture we need to move. He wishes I would have taken up crocheting as a hobby. So I can even look at this rag. And at this point, I've cleaned this twice and rinsed with water twice. And I'm still getting discoloration on my rag. This piece is for sure a bleeder. So if you can't tell, that's one, one large clue is look at how your piece is cleaning with your white lightning, and that's usually a good indicator. Um, because I know this piece is a bleeder, I know, oops, I got a little drip of water. Um, I know that I'm gonna wanna use Dixie Bell Boss. Um, Boss is a stain and odor blocking primer. Um, Dixie Bell has two primers in the line. Boss does stain and odor blocking, and then Slick Stick is for painting on slick surfaces glass, plastic, laminate furniture. We see a lot of laminate. Ikea furniture is the laminate. Um, um, that would be your slick stick. This one, my problem is the bleed through. I know I need to stop it with boss. Um, I am going to, however, give it a scuff sanding now. So if, real quick, if it's a bleeder, you don't continue to go at it. I would not continue to clean it. You're just going to, it's just going to keep leaching those tannins through. The oils are going to keep getting leached out of the wood. You would be there wiping for, there are some that will never stop. You will just keep, it can even form like a foamy, bubbly film on there. And you just want to wipe it clean. Just get it to where it's clean enough that you can get a coat on there because you're just going to keep pulling those tannins out. All right, let's talk scuff sanding. When I'm scuff sanding, um, I'm not trying to get it down to the bare wood. I just want to degloss my finish a little bit. So this has a pretty shiny finish on it. Um, and I want to make sure that my finishes have something to bite onto. And so I'm going to give this a little bit of bite using my Surf Arr. Prep Rad Pads. Arr. Okay, so this is a Surf Prep Rad Pad. These are available from Dixie Bell and your Dixie Bell retailers. Um, I like, they come in multi-packs and they're different colors. I like the blue or the red one for scuff sanding. So I just am going to wrap it around a sanding block. This is super old sanding block. It's not good for sanding anymore, but it is good for, I can use it to wrap my rad pad around. And then these are flexible and stretchable. So even when I'm doing surfaces like this over here, I can wrap my corner and I can scuff that up. I can get into some of these details and scuff them up. So I'm not trying to get down to my wood. I just want to lightly scuff it. All right, that's just taking down the sheen of my finish, giving a little bit of bite for my paint to grab onto. And then obviously I need to tack off the dust that I'm gonna create in scuff sanding. So at this point, what I've done is I've taken my hardware off, my repairs are made. Um, I did that in the reverse order than what I just told you guys. My hardware is <laughs> off, I've cleaned it, um, I've rinsed it with water, I've scuff sanded, my repairs would be made. All of those would be done at this point, okay? And once those are finished, now I'm ready to go ahead and put some of my actual finishing products on. This. Well, we have a few people that are chiming in at 2.15 a.m. Oh, in geez. the UK. Nothing I'd rather do. That's my kind of people. Making it happen. I mean, I should be telling you guys to go to bed, but I would be up too. <laughs> I would be a hypocrite for telling you guys to go to bed. Um, let's talk about what finish I want to put on this piece. So the first, the first part you spend kind of taking your piece apart and now I've got to build it all back up to where I want it to go. Where do I want this piece to go? Um, and I'm thinking I want to use one of the new Dixie Bell decoupage papers. So these are the new papers from Dix or Dixie Bell. This is just one of the designs right here. But as soon as I opened the package, this was the first design that jumped out at me. I love this paper. It's a um, barn wood. It's called pallet wood. So you know all those DIYs on Pinterest where all the stuff you can make out of pallet wood? I'm gonna do one of those, but I'm gonna do mine with paper. 
Um, and I have a few decisions I'm going to make as we go. Um, one of them was was that I'm not sure if I want to put my paper vertically. Stacy, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Or if I should go horizontally. I'm leaning towards a vertical application. And I'm, I want to go across the front of the piece. The sides of this have, have kind of frames on them. And so I'm going to put it inside the frame. And then I've got to decide on a paint color because I am going to have spots where my paint shows. And that's going to be like these corners right here will have paint on them. This up, uh, molding up here will have paint on it. So my paint color that I'm going to put with this paper is going to be Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. And I think it's going to pull out this creamy white that's kind of here in this section. And drop cloth is a very farmhouse vintage white. And that's kind of what this paper says to me. So that's the direction that I'm going with it. All right. Before we get to any of that stuff, though, I've got to get a base laid on this piece. I first want to go ahead and put my Dixie Belle boss on it. Okay, so I'm going to pull this drawer out a little bit. I'm going to use boss in gray. Dixie Belle boss comes in gray, in white, and in clear. Um, and really any of those would work for this piece, but I chose gray for a few reasons. Number one, I love the coverage of the boss in gray. It's a great coverage. It's a beautiful product. It's probably my favorite one to put on. So if I have a choice and I can use any of them, I'll usually choose gray just for the coverage and how it goes on. Um, I also thought if I distress this a little bit and I've got my drop cloth and then I'll have my gray boss and then I'll have some wood underneath, I thought those layers would be kind of pretty to show through. So I'm actually gonna use my boss as part of my finish. That's kind of my thought going into this. Um, gray boss also makes a great base under white paint. So even if you're painting in white, um, gray is a good primer for white. Could you put a stencil over plain wood? Yes, you can. You can put a stencil over plain wood. You can put um, uh, the new transfers over plain wood. That, that was actually a look I considered for this piece was putting a transfer on it. Um, hang on, I'll show you which one. I'm going to throw another question at you. Yeah. When sanding? How do you have a tip or a trick as far as getting rid of or minimizing those squiggly lines that sometimes you get? That's so funny. I actually get that question in my inbox a ton, a ton, hmm. a ton. If you're getting squiggly lines with your sander, um, no matter what brand your sander is, there's a few things to look at. Number one, your paper might be too abrasive. You might be using too harsh of a paper and you need to go down to a lighter grit paper. So that's one thing to look at. Number two, your paper could be worn or it's got uh, crusties in it. You know, it's not new anymore and you need to replace it. It's got spots on it like this. Those are going to create irregularities in your sanding pattern. Um, number three, I have a surf prep sander. It needs to be calibrated every once in a while. I need to recalibrate my sander. So those are three things I consider if I'm getting swirlies in my um, sanding. My paper's too abrasive. My paper's too old or I need to recalibrate my sander. Oh, sorry, squiggly worms. <laughs> Is that the technical term? That's the technical term. Yeah, sorry. You Making it happen. Yeah. I don't know about the squirrely Squig stuff. Squiggly worms, squirrely worms. I like that one better. The squirrelies. Squirrely, squirrely, squirrelies. Sounds like you should go to the doctor. Them. Same problem, same problem. You got the squirrelies. So the other look I kind of considered for this was using the new Dixie Belle uh, sunflower transfer. I'm indecisive as heck, guys. Um, what? If I know, pretty much every every piece I start nah. ends up a completely different look than where I thought I was going. So I may be telling you decoupage and you come back next week and it's like, we're going to do a, I don't know, spray painted boho look on this. Who knows? But I thought this would be cute. And this is also a very farmhouse look. This is the new sunflower transfer from Dixie Belle. And I thought if I kind of wove them down this corner, it would be a really farmhouse look. But for now, I'm going with the paper in my in my head. Unless you guys tell me all on video you want the transfer. I mean, and then I might listen because I would be influenced too, right? What? You know, I'm very susceptible to that stuff. <laughs> Brittany says, ask you what's for dinner. <laughs> yeah. See how yeah. she is. Um, and Gary wants to know, know why you left a nail out of the, on the top of the piece. I left a nail out? You really did. <laughs> I don't know. He's trying to just <laughs> throw curveballs. Maybe I really did. If you have nails sticking out of the top of your piece, you do want to solve that problem. Okay, this piece has these little fake wormholes in, in it. It's, oh, here we go with the worm again. <laughs> yeah, the squirrely whirlies in this one are actually these little wormholes. I'm going to make sure my boss gets down into them. 
you can see them as I start covering over it because my first brush over doesn't uh, get into those crevices as well. So I'm just going to make sure that I kind of dig my brush tips down into those little fake wormholes. Overall, I, I think they're cute. I, I leave them. I don't have a problem with the wormholes. I do have a problem with the wormholes if they have worms in them still. Then I would really. Be, yeah. That's so weird. <laughs> yeah. Then it would be a problem for me. Oh, on so many levels. <laughs> yeah, you want to make sure you solve. Where did you find this piece? Any infestation issues <laughs> prior? To Why is it even close to my house? <laughs> yeah, if you got it out of your house, please move away from there. Um, you want to solve any infestation issues before adding your finishes onto your furniture piece. This one, it's just part of the faux finish. Technical I tips by Brush by Brandy. I hope it's part of the faux finish. Um, huh? Yeah. But I mean, just in case, do we have any rain? There's a burn pile <laughs> out front. Um, knock on wood, I've never picked up a piece that had an infestation issue that I know of anyways. Oh my gosh. Well, that's not true either. Yeah, well, that's... <laughs> Knows the story. Is it story time? Where's <laughs> Sheila? You guys want to stop? Oh, awful, man. awful, awful, awful. Uh, not a piece for me. It did not. Yeah, let's let's set the registry. <laughs> it never made it to my house. So I want to point out first of all, do you guys see the coverage on this gray boss? It's great, amazing coverage. I love the gray boss. A couple things about when I put boss on. Um, this piece. Watch these drawers. They sit inside the frame. And it's pretty tight. I got a little bit of a drip right here on my hardware hole. Um, it's pretty tight. Once you start building up, if I was to paint my frame in boss, my paint, you know, my decoupage paper, whatever, if I start building those finishes up on the frame and the drawer, it's going to start making that even tighter. So I usually do not put boss around my entire drawer frame. What, what are you doing? Where's my screwdriver? Did I just shove no, it inside right. the drawer? No. <laughs> so a couple things. Luann wants to know if you've ever seen the worm. <laughs> I know. I know. I don't even know. I would, I've, I've never seen a wood worm. I haven't. And oh, my gosh. Thank Dan, oh sweet. Dana wants story time. Okay. Oh, it's an awful story, you guys. It's, it's totally awful. awful. It's about bugs. <laughs> can, you, can you guys stomach bugs? All right. This piece, just from shutting that drawer, these drawers have a pretty tight fit in there. I'm going to have to sand down my frame a little bit. I can tell just by pushing this in, it starts to rub just my boss. So what's going to happen when I put paint on here too, it's going to rub even more. I'm just going to take my sander and I'm going to run it along the frame up at the top here. Let's pop this guy out. So just just, tell the story. I would just take my power sander and I'm going to run it. It's so gross. I don't even want to tell you guys. Um, it doesn't affect me. I'm cool with it. Yeah, well, technically it's not. Well, um, I would just run my sander along here and I would say, shave this down so that it's a, a few little millimeters thinner than my drawer is. All right. The story. Oh, man. My younger it sister. It kind of did affect me. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. My younger sister called me up one day and was like, Hey, Brian, um, I need help. I want to pick up this couch that I found. Um, yes. <laughs> and she That's said, always my response. It was yes. pretty, yeah, my sister, my sister, Sean loves helping my sisters out. No, really, guys, he loves helping you out. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> so she called me up and was like, hey, I need help. I want to pick up this couch I found on, I don't know, Craigslist or whatever. Can you come help me? Because I have a large SUV in a truck. I had a large SUV at the time. And so, sure, no problem. Ran over and, uh, should have ran it over. Me and my sister, <laughs> me and my sister start moving this couch out of someone's house. I am not on the scene. I am not there. Okay, we start moving the couch out of someone's house. We're loading it into the back of my car. And one of the neighbors walks out and says, why are you buying that couch? They got bed bugs. No, she had a heavy accent, it was like a southern accent. That's my southern accent, by the way. They got bed bugs. And I was like, oh my gosh. And so we started looking, like if you take a little, and looking in the seams of the sofa that we just moved out of this house, this apartment or whatever. I got drip. Sure enough. Thanks, Cindy. They're squiggly wigglies. They're alive. <laughs> They're alive, okay? 
I like least... that phone call, by the way. <laughs> yeah. I was While freaking working. out because we had loaded part of it into the back of my SUV. Freaking out. We were screaming. Okay, we straight pushed this couch out onto the curb of the street and like left it there as fast as we could. And then I called uh, a friend of ours who worked in pest control and he was like, roll up the windows on the car. Um, Basically heat it up because you got lucky out. enough at the time of year. Yeah, it was summertime. Park it out in the sun for a couple days and you just cook them. And I was like, I mean, we didn't, I don't even know that they were in my car, but we just cooked we just cooked them. I just rolled the windows up, was like, don't touch mama's car for a few days, guys. We're just going to leave it the driveway. I'm and... glad no one I work with is on here. <laughs> this is an awful story. Because if they were around then, they knew exactly what and was we, going on. And we cooked them. So long story short, I've never, 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 never seen a bed bug in my house. I do not own this vehicle anymore. Um... <laughs> that is not why we got rid of it. But I, now that I've seen them... Ask Sean, we go to a hotel room. What do I make you do at hotels? Oh, Sean has to pull I just go to the bar. Bed. Sean has to pull the whole bed apart. I can't do it. I'm so freaked out by this. Pull the whole bed apart. All the blankets come off. We pull the bed out from the wall. Like, I mean, the hotel room gets trashed. You know, like it's like a... In seconds. It's like a rock star stayed there for yes. a few days. And all. we've only been there for like 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we put it all back together just so I can sleep there. It's like a race. <laughs> Once you see them, you will be horrified. So that is my only story about pests. It was not even for me. It never made it into my house. Um, I will never buy anything made of cloth off Craigslist, Facebook, etc. And that is why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving yeah. on. Hey, how many viewers did we lose? Woo! Consent? Yeah, <laughs> just curious. Oh, you really you don't write for Hallmark. I'm yeah. so shocked by this. So, but there is a there's a lot of lessons there on picking up. Uh, this was this was years and years and years ago. Gosh, I couldn't even tell you what year this was. This Not was years enough. ago. I'll tell you what. That's a lesson I'm glad I learned. Because once it happens, every other piece after that. Like, better be just shy. Oh, away. man. Dana said she found a curbside piece, an end table, and opened up the drawer. <gasps> and 100 roaches went scattering. No! It. Oh, no! I'm out. Yep, could not, could not Mic drop. I'm gone. I know it's I know it's really common. Like, you read all this stuff about infestations and, I mean, bed bugs especially. For a while there, like, it seemed like all you heard was everybody's got them. Oh, <sighs> Oh, I really like working on this old furniture. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so about that. No, those are those are things to watch out for. You can treat woodworms. I'd rather just pass on the piece though. I'm the same way about um, odors. If it's got cigarette smoke, I'm all about it, Brittany. Burn it. <laughs> Burn it. <laughs> yeah. Travel with a gas yeah, can. I, I, the new Dixie Bell match kit. Yeah. Okay, that's what we're gonna start selling. Um, Flint stick. So those are a couple things to look for when you're when you're looking at pieces of furniture. If it's on the curb or it's it's too good to be true, it probably is. That may just be me being cynical. Oh but... man, I agree, Luann. Thanks for that neighbor. Oh, I know, you right? 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 <laughs> That's so true too. And I mean, she was just she. You could tell she didn't like the people, but, but thankfully she made us even look because that it would have ended up in the back of my car. That's for sure. So I'm going to, um, uh, there's a couple things I'm doing here. I'm going to strip this top down. I already sanded it down to the bare wood. I'm not worried if I get um, my boss or paint up on top of this wood because I'll just lightly sand it again before I um, do my treatment on the wood. Um, but I'm painting this part right here, number one, because I think it looks cute with a little paint accent up against the raw wood. Um, and number two, I don't want to sand this little round portion. So, you know, it's a two for one I deal. agree, Gary. Smoked furniture. <laughs> so, Nobody says that's a great yard sale find. Um, two coats are recommended on Boss, and I will usually wait a few hours in between my coats. You want to make sure it's completely dry so you get the full effectiveness of the product. Don't try to cut corners with your preparation for your furniture piece. 
Um, Boss goes on really nice like a paint. It is a water-based product. So all my brushes that I'm using, you'll notice I'm using my good Dixie Bell brushes. I don't feel like I need to use um, old gross brushes like you may need to with some oil-based primers because they don't clean up very well. Boss cleans up really nicely. So I use my good brushes and that gives me a nice smooth base for my paint to go on to. Um, it paints on just like a really nice quality paint does, especially this gray. I'm just kind of skipping that whole side of the piece just because... <laughs> Ginger, <laughs> notice none of you all use painter's tape. <laughs> That's <laughs> I, experience. I don't. Oh, look. What is that? Look. You see that guy? Oh, come on now. I know. Sean won't get that. That's a spider. Oh, man. You gotta I'll, go I'll do real. snakes. I'll do all... Yeah. yeah spiders, spiders, not spiders. so much. That's my job. That's not cool. I do uh, make sure before any of my pieces go home, I turn them upside down and look at the bottom, get all the spider babies out. Sorry, spider babies, you're not getting transport with me. Um, you were just saying something and I was going to talk. Oh, that sounds tragic. You know, everybody's like, please don't say it again, whatever yeah. you do, Sean. Um, I make sure when I'm putting my boss on... I load my brush up pretty heavy. Make sure my brush strokes are all going in one nice even direction. This is the base for my paint finish. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Look, Gary, I got standards. <laughs> I'm not going after spiders. <laughs> I got limits. Right? This diva's got limits. <laughs> uh, you want to see Sean scream like a girl? Watch me throw that rag at him. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really see someone scream? They would. They would, have okay. a, they would have a mental picture right. that would last a lifetime. What are you, Charlie be, Chaplin? It would be totally worth it. <laughs> um, another thing I want to talk to you guys about is I'm putting boss down, and you might be like, well, if you plan to cover it with a paper, why do you need to cover, you know, why do you care about bleed through? Papers are porous. Your paper can bleed too. So <laughs> if you're planning to cover in a paper and it's not like a vinyl wallpaper or anything, if it's a porous paper, like the, the decoupage papers from Dixie Bell are, this is a rice paper. It's a thin tissue. These lay really nicely. Once we get to this step, you'll love these papers. Um, if my piece is going to bleed, it will bleed through my paper and it will discolor my paper too. So that's something to consider when you're doing a decoupage finish. Papers bleed also. We are going to do this piece over the course of a few episodes. So you guys will get to see me lay this decoupage on. But I wanted to give you a realistic view of what it looks like to get a piece ready before you even lay your finishes on. There's a few days of work usually because consider that I'll need to wait for dry time from my boss and then I need to, I'm gonna put a coat of paint down. And so there's a couple days there of just preparing my piece before I get to that papering portion. Um, you'll notice I am taking all my drawers out. A lot of people ask why I paint with my drawers in so frequently. If I paint with my drawers in, it's usually for two reasons. Number one, if I'm blending, I need to get a consistent blend over the front of my furniture piece. Can you hear me if I'm talking like into the dresser like this? No. Oh my <laughs> okay, gosh. Um, <laughs> I can. Um, Going farther. Uh, I paint with my drawers in because it's so you guys have a better angle on camera. Um, and it's also because if I'm getting a, if I'm doing a blended finish, I need to get a consistent blend over the front of those drawers. But I always take them out and I finish around my drawer edges as well. Um, I finish right inside to the edge of this, there's a little wood piece right here that you guys can see. Um, that's a natural end to the wood. I just make sure that that's all finished. Cassandra, don't say that you can hear her. I try not to a lot. <laughs> then I just have to talk louder. I'm, I don't wear a microphone when I'm live, so I never, I always worry if you guys can hear me. I just project huh? really well. All right, I get inside the sides of my drawer here. And then I'll just have to make sure because these drawers fit tight, if I need to shave down either the frame or the sides of my drawers, I may need to do that. Sometimes that happens after all my finishes are on. I end up realizing that it's a tight fit. And um, drawer sides are really easy to touch up. If I need to shave them down, I would just 
Let me show you what I mean by a drawer side. If my, if my drawer is a tight fit, see this little guy right here? I would just hit that with my sander and that's all I need to do. And then I can just take and touch that right back up again. And that's a tiny little area on the side of my drawer. If my drawer is a little too tight after I've got some of my finishes on there. Can you put paper right over boss? Yes, you can. So that's another thought I had too was, well, maybe I'll just paper right over this boss. Absolutely. You could do that. Um, I am going to have some parts where my, where my wood shows though. Um, I'm thinking these edges right here, my wood is going to show. So I am going to add some paint. I don't need to paint the front of my drawers though. Um, those are going to have the paper on them. So if I wanted to just skip that on the parts that will be papered, most definitely boss is a great, um, base that you could put under your paper too. Um, usually you want to have a solid color base under your paper. Um, because if you have any sort of finish, once I add moisture to this paper, it's translucent. I can see my hand under here. So if I've got some kind of blended finish that's got drip marks and stuff, you're going to see that all underneath my paper. So you want to make sure you have a solid paint color under there. Um, you can do either a light or a dark color, depending on the background of your paper. Knowing it's a, a little bit translucent, it's going to pull through those colors. I'm going to use a light color under mine, but here where I've got dark in my paper, it's going to lighten that. It's going to make it look like maybe like a whitewashed wood almost, because it's going to show through that light, my drop cloth underneath. Okay. Okay. I never know. It always feels like I've been yapping too much. You have. <laughs> okay, thank you for clarifying. So my next step on this is going to be to paint my drop cloth over the top. I think I'm going to go ahead and paint it over the entire top of my boss. I'm just going to cover this entire um, top of my boss. And then from there, I'll add my paper over to that. So I don't think we're going to get past or we're going to get through to that step, but we did a lot of work tonight. This is a couple hours of work. If you're at home working on a furniture piece, just doing, removing your hardware, cleaning your piece, um, a light scuff sanding we did, get my boss on here. This would be a, this would be my day one of work and I didn't even get to any of my finishes yet. So that's something to, good to keep in mind. Just make sure that you're getting your piece prepped. I'm over cautious on prep too. You know, for example, an example of over caution would be if I was doing this piece and I wasn't hundred percent sure it was a bleeder, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, but my paint color's light. I, I would just put the boss on there. Same thing with slick stick. If I'm not sure, maybe it needs it, but it's not, it's not really that slick of a finish. It's just, I'll just put the boss on there. If it's a doubt, I would rather that finish stand the test of time and just go ahead and be overly cautious in my in my prep. And that includes using a primer even if you're even if you're on the fence because I see too many people that have done a piece and then you wish you had add a primer and you know what that means? You've got to go back. You've got to take your finishes back off and put that primer on there. So it's easier just to do it up front and if that means I'm being overly cautious, so be it. There's worse things to be called, right? Sean knows. Oh. Because I'm usually <laughs> called them or? I mean, not your face. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I told you guys that this piece had little frames on the sides. This is the frames. Can you see that on camera? Okay. These are the frames. So when I do the sides on this piece, and we're going to do this all together. I'm going to put my paper inside this frame here. But this is all going to have paint around the edges. I don't think I'm going to paper this. Did you add any water to your boss? No, I didn't. It goes so what on, happens if it's thick? Um, it goes on really easily. You could mist your surface with boss. So here's what I say about altering products. Okay, tinting is the same thing. If you're, say, using white boss and you want to tint it. Okay, tinting and water require a drop. I don't want to take this and make a 50 50 mixture with water because then I've altered the formula of this. But if I miss my surface, so my brush glides a little bit easier, it's a completely different story. So I have no problem with misting. Let me show you what I mean. <coughs> this is a mister bottle. These are the Dixie Bell mister bottles. If, if it's hot and my boss is drying quickly, miss my surface, 
just a, li to a little bit to lubricate the surface of the furniture piece. That's it. And it does. It, it glides on much easier. I have no problem with misting my surface. I do have a problem with telling people it's okay to dilute your boss. Hmm? <laughs> Number one, Sean hates the way I say dilute. He reminds me every night I say it. Make sure I get in this crack right here. So I don't have an issue with uh, missing the surface, but I do have an issue. And same thing goes for if you're tinting boss. Tinting, it, tinting means literally less than a, I mean, <clears throat> less than a teaspoon of paint is tinting. It takes so little paint to tint. Once you, once you tint it one time, you'll realize what I'm saying. Um, it takes very little paint to tint your boss. Especially but working I do have an issue with 50-50 mixtures of paint and boss together. Then it's a problem. So it's kind of a, you need to learn it. I would never tell a beginner it's okay to tint your boss because, you know, tinting to some people is, is, a, is a mix, a full mix to others. What about slick stick? Can you... Uh... Same thing. I don't want to alter the formula of these products, you guys. So consider that. Um, it's like... You know, you you want to you want to maintain it, but that little bit of water that I put on the surface, number one, it's a water-based product. It was a tiny mist of water, like that would barely measure in anything. So just just know the limits, I guess. You do it cautiously because you don't want to be going through the effort to put a product on there, and then you just destroy the effectiveness of it by um, altering the formulation of it. That's what happens. So, you know, same thing with uh, you can mix <clears throat> dark paint into your clear coats and that helps them not be streaky over dark colors, mixing a little bit of dark paint into it. Um, if you over mix that and you do, say, a 50-50 mixture of dark paint, I want to get down into this crevice right here. I'm going to add a little bit of water just so my paint want to go in there. I said paint, it's boss. Um, adding paint to your clear coats. If you add too much, you make your clear coat turn into a chalky finish and then it's back to just being like the regular paint finish, like you didn't even add clear coat to it. So, you know, just, just be mindful that tinting takes very, 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 very little paint to tint something. Um, I have a video coming out where um, I tint resin using Dixie Bell. And that's a big no-no because resin is not friendly to water and Dixie Belle is a water-based paint. But I'll tell you what, I use like a fingernail amount of paint and it works fine and I do it all the time. So stuff is possible if you understand the reason why, you know, it's not recommended, but does that make sense? You know, uh, the resin I work with, if you go to their website, they'll tell you all day long, you can't have water near it. But if you mix this much paint, it's not enough to alter that formulation enough to have a negative effect. All right, you guys, I'm going to finish. I have one more side to get my boss on, but I've got a beautiful coat of boss. Um, it's starting to dry, but it's not, I'm not anywhere there yet. Um, I think next week I'll go ahead and get, um, we'll, we'll go ahead and put some drop cloth on and we'll go ahead and start adding our paper to the front of this. We'll do this all together and you guys will get to see. Through that process, you're going to get to see me seaming these papers up. We need to trim the edges of it before we can put it on. See how it's got a little border there? So that's super easy. I just take a ruler and a razor knife and I'm just going to trim them right off. It's super fast. Um, and we'll seam these together. They seam up really beautifully. And um, so we'll do that together next week. And then you guys will get to see, I think we'll have probably three weeks working on this piece together. And in the end, you guys will have an entire start to finish tutorial that we did live. All right. So thank you guys all for hanging out. It is Thursday, which is technically Friday. It really what? is. I mean, it really is. Really? That might be just Are you Friday. working tomorrow? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Because it's not Friday. <laughs> Tomorrow is. I'm telling you, I don't care what anybody says. I probably work, I don't know, 100 hour weeks because I don't have regular work hours. I work from when I wake up to when I go to bed. Um, there's never an off switch when you're self-employed. I'm sure all our retailers know that. It just means you work more hours. 
It's a bad deal. Whoever sold me on this. All right, you guys. Um, I hope you're comfortable prepping a piece. You can use the link that I put above in the post to find any of the products we use tonight. The Surf Prep Rad Pads, um, Dixie Bell White Lightning Cleaner, the Boss, um, the Mr. Bottles are available on the website, our drop cloth paint that we're going to use. The decoupage papers are also available through that link, and you can also use that link to find your local retailer if you want to go into a shop and check out any of these products in person, too. Um, you can put your zip code, you can find your local retailer. Um, oh, happy Easter, everyone. Yes.